Pastor Keith Moore. I give you authority. Lesson 3. Why didn't it work? In Luke the ninth chapter, Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. We began on this some weeks ago. I want to continue in it. Luke 9, 1, it said, Then he called his twelve disciples together, and he gave them power and authority. Everybody say power, power. and authority. He gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now, a lot of modern uh, teaching and preaching and, and church doctrine doesn't talk about things like demons. <laughs> and a lot of folks don't talk about healing. And people have gotten away from the spiritual and supernatural. But that's just men changing. The Bible never changed. Reality has never changed. If you read the scriptures, you'll find it speaks much about spirits. That there's flesh and there's spirit. Here he says uh, a power and authority over devils. Actually, that's King James. I think maybe a better rendering would be demons. There's one devil and a number of demons. And when people hear demon or evil spirit, most of the time their mind gravitates or, or just zips to a Hollywood concept. Maybe some horror show that they saw of a 40-foot monster, red with horns, uh, just a, a, a horrible, terrifying thing that most people want to say is just not real, doesn't exist, or if they do believe it exists, they're so scared they don't want to talk about it. Let's just, let's don't talk about those things. And neither of those is right. There is a devil. There are evil spirits. There are angels. There's the Holy Spirit. God is spirit. You are a spirit. If you lost your body today, your body died. You wouldn't die. You'd slip out of your body. You'd still be you. You'd still have your mind. Hmm? You just wouldn't be in your body. You're a spirit. God's called the father of spirits. So our mind needs to be renewed and come in line with the word. The scripture talks about Jesus warned his disciples and us of the doctrine of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And this is the doctrine of the Sadducees. Don't turn there, but Acts 23, 8. Acts 23, 8 says the Sadducees say there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. Well, the Sadducees are still with us today, aren't they? People that don't believe in any afterlife. They don't believe in any spirit or angel. Sadducees. Like one fellow said, that's why they're sad, you see. <laughs> if, you, if there's no tomorrow, if there's no hope, if there's nothing past this life, well, that is sad. But that's simply not true. I said, if you believe the Bible, you can't accept that. Because the Bible is full of accounts of spirits. The spirit realm, another dimension from this physical realm, is real. You know, I find it interesting. So I, 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 I'm curious sometimes to, to watch people who study the stars and, and space and, and those kind of things and some of the things they're coming up with and some of the things they're finding out about it and, and, and they've decided, you know, there's another dimension. <laughs> wow. 
<coughs> and you know that there's, there's dark matter and there's, there's stuff you can't see. Well, yeah, there's always been stuff you can't see. There's a whole realm you can't see and it's real. And there are spirit beings and spirit entities. And you know, I think some folks might relate better. The church has gotten so goofy in, about some of these things. Uh, some people would relate better if you told the gospel story more along the lines of a science fiction <coughs> novel, except it's not fiction. Is there intelligent life out there? Absolutely. <laughs> have, have, have there been non-human beings visit the planet? Oh yeah, it's a regular occurrence. <laughs> They're called angels. Right? Absolutely the truth. And yet people want, they, they want to make these things out to be fantasy and fairy tale. No. If you believe the Bible, if you believe gospel accounts, Jesus dealt with spirits. Did he or didn't he? Have you read it? He dealt with spirits. And he authorized and empowered his disciples to deal with spirits. Didn't he? Yeah. Go to the 10th chapter of Luke. Not just the 12. But then also. 70 others. Luke 10 and 17. Says the 70 returned again with joy. And they said Lord. Even the devils. Again that's, that's demons. Are subject to us. Through thy name. The demons are subject to us through thy name. And Jesus said, oh, there's no such thing. <laughs> Y'all are just imagining a bunch of stuff. No, he's the one that authorized them. Didn't he? Yep. Why am I saying all this? You need to make up your mind. Real or fantasy? No, this is real. The demons are subject to us through thy name. And he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Here's some good news. The devil ain't what he used to be. Amen. Verse 19, Jesus said, behold, I give to you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So should we be afraid of these of this devil and, and these demons, these evil spirits, should we be afraid? No. We should not be. Children of God should not be. And let me put it like that. Should not be. Ought not be. Go with me over to the book of uh, Ephesians. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Also, we'll go to James chapter four. Ephesians four, and then straight over to James four. Ephesians 4.27, what does it say? Ephesians 4.27, neither give place to the devil. The Amplified says, leave no room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. What does that mean? That means I can shut the door. I am not, you are not a helpless victim. The devil's a liar. And he would try to convince you that evil forces and temptations and what have you can overwhelm you to the point that you can't resist. And it just rolls over you and there's nothing you can do about it. That's a lie. I said, that's a lie. There is no such thing as an irresistible temptation. I want to go over that again real slow. There is no such thing as an irresistible temptation. If you yield, it's not a sin to be tempted. Jesus himself was tempted. It's not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin when you yield to the temptation and you, you do what you know is not right. But the very fact that you have to repent 
means you could have done differently. If you couldn't help it, if it was just bigger than you and just rolled over you and you, you, you had no, uh, no ability to resist it, then you shouldn't be required to repent because it wasn't your fault. You couldn't help it. But the fact that you have to repent means you could have done something different. You could have resisted. You didn't have to yield. Nobody ever has to yield to wrong influences. You believe it or not. You don't want to believe that you can't help it because you'll be in trouble then. If you believe I can't help it, you're a helpless victim. No, don't give place to the devil. What does that mean? It means I can shut the door and give the devil no place in my life. Even though the devils and demons and evil spirits are real, they don't have to have any influence in your life. You can shut the door and not yield. And not give place. In James the fourth chapter. James chapter four. And seven. It says submit yourselves therefore to God. Who should you yield to? Who should you submit to? Not the devil. Don't give the devil any place. But do yield to God. Yield to him. Submit to him. Two of the most important things you can ever learn in this life. What to yield to. What to resist. You don't want to be resisting God. And you don't want to be yielding to the enemy. Right? Yield to God. Resist the devil and what will happen? What will happen? Oh, he'll raise up about 50 feet and growl. And slap you. Because you're just a mere mortal. And he's the devil. (laughs) We need mind renewal. Because people's ideas about the devil have come from uh, horror books and movies and shows and just ignorance and all kind of junk. No. Children of God should have absolutely no fear of the devil or evil spirits. In fact, realizing that when we resist them in Jesus' name, they're afraid of us. Is it true? They're afraid of us. Sit out loud. The devil devil is afraid of me. me. (coughs) True or not? Sit out loud. Demons Demons are afraid of me. me. You ought to say that another ten times. Come on. Sit out loud. Demons Demons are afraid of me. me. Say it again. Close your eyes. Demons Demons are afraid of me. Demons Demons are afraid afraid of me. me. They're afraid of me. When you resist them, in Jesus' name, stand up against the devil. Uh, The uh, Young's literal translation says, he'll flee from you. He'll run from you. 1 Peter 5 says a similar thing. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. I'm so glad that may is in there. Aren't you? He makes a lot of noise. Didn't say he was a roaring lion. He goes about like one. He's making a lot of noise. His principal tool is fear. If he can get you into fear and get you to act on fear, especially, then you have yielded to him. And he's able to do things. And your fears can come on you. But he's seeking who? Hmm? I know when I was first in the, uh, started in the ministry, um, the enemy brought thoughts to my mind. I was uh, 20 one, I guess, or so. And uh, these thoughts kept coming to my mind, you're not going to live much longer. You're not going to live much longer. Well, maybe I was about to be 21. That's what it was. Uh, my granddad was shot and killed when he was 21. And his dad was shot and killed when he was 21. And they'd tell me, you know, boy, you look just like him. <clears throat> And people would talk about how mysterious it was that they died the same way. 
exactly the same age. And I was the next man on, that was on my mom's side of the family. <clears throat> and, uh, and when you don't know these things, you know, people think, well, isn't that, isn't that odd? Isn't that strange? And, and they want to talk about it. And what the enemy's trying to do is put fear in you and get, get you to expect that. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, thank God that prior, a, a few years prior to that, we begin to get in enough word to say, no, I'm, that's not going to happen to me. <clears throat> and begin to cast those thoughts down and refuse those things. But even after I was in the uh, training in the ministry, it'd come to me. I'd just be doing things, not thinking about any of that. And this thought would come to me, you're not going to live much longer. You better do what you're going to do because you're going to die young and, you know, granddad died young, his dad died young, you're going to die young and, uh, you know, that kind of junk. And finally, one day, thank God for the Holy Spirit. If you listen to him, he'll help you out. I don't mean an audible voice, but from down inside me, this thought came up. The Spirit of God prompted me and said, why don't you ask him why he hasn't already done it? And I got sassy. I thought, yeah, yeah, bad boy. Why haven't you already taken me out? Why? Why didn't you kill me when I was 10? Why didn't you take me out when I was 15? Had plenty of chances. I mean, I did some wild stuff. I had to go to the emergency room every summer a couple of times to get sewed up. I thought I was Tarzan, man. I, I tried it all. Plenty of chances to kill me. Why didn't you do it? Why didn't you do it? You know why he hasn't done it? Same reason he hadn't already killed you. He wants to. Bad. But God's angels have kept you until this present hour. And if you'll walk with the Lord, he can't. You will, you'll run your race and finish your course. The devil is a stealer. He's a thief. He's a destroyer. He's a killer. He'd take all of us out if he could. But it, the reason he hasn't is because he can't. He can't un, un, unless we just give him the place, unless we decide we're not going to serve God anymore and do stupid stuff and don't listen. If we'll just walk with the Lord, he'll keep us. And the, that wicked one touches us not. Can you say amen? amen. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, I'm going all the way. I'm going, I'm going all the way. I'm going to run my race. I'm going to finish my course. I'm going all the way. <coughs> Resist the devil and what will happen? He will flee from you. The Bible said in James, in fact, uh, where are you? Your first Peter? Go back to James, you're close. And notice this. James chapter 1. Actually, chapter 2 is where I want you to be. Chapter 2 and uh, 19, it says, you believe that there is one God. You do well. The devils also believe, and when they think about it, what do they do? <clears throat> they tremble. Everybody say tremble. 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 If you look up that word, it means to shudder, to shiver. <laughs> uh, Brother Kenneth Hagin, my father in the faith, has had visions. Uh, he's in heaven now and describes seeing some of these things. And you, you have to judge everything like this from the word of God and from your own Spirit. If it doesn't bear witness with you, you don't see it in the Word, don't just accept somebody's vision or dream that they tell. Anybody. Uh, but uh, 
Some of the things he shared sound right to me. And he said on more than one occasion, the Lord let him see uh, one of these uh, demons that was harassing somebody. On one occasion, he said uh, the Lord let him see in the spirit. And there was this little creature. Everybody say little. And said he had his, had his arms around this, one, this man's head. And, you know, normally you couldn't see anything like that. He said he looked monkey-like. He said not, not a monkey, but monkey-like features. And he said he saw him. And he said, uh, he said I command you to leave this man. And, and, and he said, the, the thing said back to him, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. But if you tell me to, I know I have to. He said, well, so go. Get off of him. Leave him. And he said, he said I command you in Jesus' name. He said he fell on the floor and laid there and shivered <laughs> and whimpered. He said, like a little pup you'd hit with a newspaper or something. <laughs> Just lay there and shiver. Now, these are our big, bad demons. <laughs> Are y'all with me now? This is reality. This is not. Now the devil don't want you to know that. Who do you think's inspiring these horror flicks? With these 200 foot tall devils. That are virtually Tyrannosaurus Rex with a pitchfork, you know. It ain't true. The devil has been stripped. He's been defeated by Jesus. He's been brought to naught. And in the name of Jesus, when we resist these demons, they don't stand up and fight the Holy Ghost. They fall down and shiver. Now, I know most people don't see these things, and that's okay. But it doesn't mean it's not there or that it's not real. And you don't have to see anything to know when there's an influence. You don't have to wait till you see something to resist it. Something's trying to tempt you to do wrong, it's time to resist it. Something's trying to deceive or, or lie or just kill, steal and destroy. You don't have to see anything. You don't have to discern anything. You know it's time to resist it. That's not right. That's of the enemy. Command it to leave. Command it to go. In the name of Jesus, and be confident Amen. and expect it to change. Amen. What a different picture. Amen. The devils believe, and what do they do? Tremble. They tremble. Yeah. Everybody say tremble. tremble. That's your word for today. <laughs> huh? And just look at each other once in a while and go, tremble. <laughs> it's code talk. <laughs> what does that mean? That's what demons do. That's what demons do when they come in contact with the living God who lives in us with the greater one who indwells us. It's not just that they're scared of us, such and such, you know, Keith more after the flesh, but it's the one who's inside me. Right? And it's the name. Hallelujah. The authority in the name that's been given to us. They quake, they fear, they tremble, they shudder, they shiver, and they run. Somebody say it again. Demons are afraid of me. You believe it? Go with me, please, to Matthew, the 17th chapter. Let's, uh, you got some more time this morning? <clears throat> Let's begin to get into some things <clears throat> that could answer some questions. Matthew 17. Now we know Jesus has authorized and empowered the 12 and the 70 to cast out evil spirits and to minister healing. And in Matthew 17 we see a... Um, a situation, Matthew 17, a man 
whose son was, the Bible said, lunatic. He had seizures and had fallen into fire and water and, and was, you know, almost destroyed repeatedly. Verse uh, 16 The man said to Jesus, I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. Wait a minute. I I thought they've been authorized and empowered. I thought they've uh, they've been casting out spirits. They've been rejoicing in the authority they were given. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Unbelief is uh, irritating to Jesus. Do you know it? Unbelief is annoying to him. You know, he's never lied to us. Ever. Why should we not trust him? He's got no ulterior motive. He, he, he's not trying to get something out of us or use us or abuse us. Never has. All he's ever done is give himself and tell us the truth. How many think we ought to trust him? Yes. Completely. Yes. All the time. Yes. Every situation. Yes. I'm telling you, unbelief is irritating to him. How many don't think it's, it's better? Don't irritate the Lord. <laughs> don't, don't annoy him. Right? Don't grieve the spirit. Uh, He said, faithless and perverse generation, how long am I going to put up with you? He said, bring him to me. Bring the boy to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. And what happened? He departed out of him and the child was cured from that hour. Are there spirits causing problems in people? Mentally? Mentally? And physically, there are. But now here's a situation where this man brought his son to Jesus' closest followers, his disciples who had been authorized and empowered, and apparently they commanded and said things, and the boy was not set free. And notice what they said. Verse 19, when the disciples Uh, They came to Jesus apart and they said, why could not we cast him out? Why didn't it work? Have there been times when people commanded and rebuked and bound and it didn't work? Happened to Jesus' own disciples. And they want to know, why didn't it work? We did everything we did with those other cases. We, re, we, we commanded, and it didn't work. Jesus said, what? What's the answer? Because of your unbelief. What's the answer? Because of your unbelief. Everybody said out loud, because, because of your unbelief. Anytime something doesn't work, That's the first place to look. Don't start coming up with new doctrines. Well, maybe it's just not God's will for this boy to be set free. Maybe God's working something out in this. No, no, no. How about because of your unbelief? (laughs) We prayed and they didn't get healed. Well, maybe it just wasn't God's will. No, no. Why it goes directly to God? Why not look in the mirror? Maybe we didn't do something right. Why are people so quick to attribute it to God? What did he say? Because of your unbelief. Verily I say to you, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, remove here. You could command it, leave and go over there and it would remove and nothing will be impossible to you. The issue is, so many times, it's just plain old garden variety doubt that's keeping things from happening. He went on to say, verse 21, Howbeit this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting, a solution, a part of the solution too, is not being so carnal. 
Right? Do some praying. Seeking God. Cut off some stuff and fast some. You become more aware of, of the spirit things. Right? Too much carnality. Too much unbelief. It's why people say and it doesn't happen. Why people pray and it didn't work. Doesn't mean it, it doesn't work. Doesn't mean it's not God's will. It comes back on our end. Do you believe this or not, saints? Are we reading scriptures? Go with me over to the book of Acts. The book of Acts. 19th chapter. 19 and 13. We see another situation. I didn't read the rest of the story, but anybody know Jesus called that, that boy to him. He, he spoke and he was delivered. Right? right? Proven it was always God's will for him to be delivered. Just because somebody prayed and it didn't work doesn't mean you know the will of God now. God's will didn't change. Right? I mean, these are some of the best in the land. Jesus' disciples prayed for you. And they rebuked and bounded and commanded and nothing happened. And it didn't prove one thing except their unbelief That's right. and their carnality. If you put this together with some other passages that happened the same time, they were also in strife about who was going to be the greatest. <laughs> How many of you are fussing and fighting about who's going to be the greatest? And you, you, you unbelief and well, that would explain you start rebuking and binding and nothing's happening. <laughs> Need to get your faith built up. Need to quit being so carnal and start seeing some results then. Can you see this, saints? Acts 19, 13, then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. They said, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. (laughs) And... Uh, there were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew and chief, chief of the priests, which did so. So these are preacher's boys, a preacher's boys. And the evil spirit answered, spoke up, used the person's voice and said, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? <laughs> now, children of God, Have no reason to fear. But these guys are not even born again. They don't know the Lord. They're trying to use this like some magical incantation. Hmm? It's not magic. It's not incantations. And uh, the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. And overcame them and prevailed against them. And they fled. The devil didn't flee. They fled. Out of the house, naked and wounded. It's not just a matter, the Bible says, the kingdom of God is not just in word, but in power. That's 1 Corinthians 4.20. The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. The NIV says, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 1.5, he said, Our gospel came not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. It's not just a matter of shouting loud, making a lot of noise, waving your hands. Go back to Luke 4. We've seen this already, but, but notice this in, this in this passage. Luke 4 and 31. <coughs> Luke 4, 31, Jesus came down to Capernaum, the city of Galilee, and he taught them on the Sabbath days. They were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was what? His word was what? With power. Everybody say with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil. Now, without going into it, the Bible refers to lying spirits, 
deceiving spirits, unclean spirits. Why would you give these different descriptions? And this is something that explains uh, so many things. When you yield to a spirit or spirits, you take on those characteristics. If you yield to the Holy Spirit, huh? you take on His characteristics. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, good faith, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. But if you yield to an unclean spirit, what would you think? You take on those characteristics. Unclean. You yield to a lying spirit, what, what's going to happen? You become a liar. And this explains, people say, well, you know, I, I, I was born a liar, or I was born, uh, you know, a child molester, or I was born this. No, no, no. Nobody is born anything evil or perverted or wrong. Amen. No, sir, no, ma'am. But the moment a child gets into this world, spirit influences are around them and begin to try to influence them. And depending on what kind of family they're in and what kind of people they're around, these influences come. And they begin to yield to them, good or bad. And whatever they yield to the most, they take on those characteristics. Do you understand this, friends? And that's why some people come up with these ideas about reincarnation. And come up with some of these ideas about, well, you know, I... Uh, I must have been like this in another life. No, the spirit you're yielding to was like that in another life. And if some folks' eyes could be opened and they could see what they've been getting cozy with, when they quit throwing up and showering, they'd never yield to it again. And it's not like it's some huge monster. It can be one of these little monkey-like looking imp creatures, but the spiritual influence is real. And it's feeding you this thoughts and these feelings and these desires and these temptations, regular basis. And it's real simple. Do you yield to it and become like it? Or do you put your foot down? And do you resist it? And you say, no, this is not right. I'm, I don't care how real it is. This is not me. I'm a child of God. Come on, are y'all with me? I'm not yielding to this. I'm not giving place to this. Now, you yield to something for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. You decide that's who you are. Right? You have identified completely with this, uh, these spirits. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Yield to the Holy Spirit. You'll become like Jesus. You'll start thinking more and more like him. Talking and acting more and more like him. He is pure. Yes. He is holy. Yes. He is the spirit of truth yes. and right and good. It said, this spirit cried out and, and said, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Are they scared of him? Oh, man. <laughs> Are they scared of him? Yes. Look at your neighbor say, tremble. tremble. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Trembling. They're going, oh. Isn't it perverted that Christians think of the devil and go, ooh. Yeah. Right. Right. It's the other way around. Yeah. It's the other way around. They're going, oh, you're going to hurt us. Don't hurt us. Please don't hurt us. <laughs> Jesus rebuked him and said, shut up and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out and heard him not. And they were all amazed and they spoke among themselves and they said, what a word is this. Now we just got through reading his word was with power. For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. Did you notice two things here? We see results. He said it, they did it. But his word was with power, with authority. Everybody say authority. authority. And, and power. power. He commands the unclean spirits. 
and they come out. Say it out loud, with authority, with authority. And, power. and power. See, those seven sons of Siva had no authority. They weren't believers. They didn't know Jesus. And so they're not speaking in authority. But not only should you speak in authority, you should speak what? With power, with an anointing on your words. Can you say amen? Amen. With an anointing on your words. Power in your words. You, You should not try commanding and saying things when you don't have confidence. The Lord dealt with me some years ago. He said, Keith, be more selective and you'll be more effective. Don't just pray anything that crosses your mind. Don't just say any. Meditate it. Check it. Look at it. And see that it is something you're supposed to say. That, and see that you do have confidence to say it. Jesus was tempted to command when he shouldn't. You remember Matthew 4 and Luke 4? Jesus uh, fasted for 40 days and nights. And at the end of that time, the Bible said he was hungry. I guess so. Right? And then what happened? The devil said, if you be the son of God, do what? Command. He's tempting him to try to command something that he shouldn't. Command that these stones be made bread. Well, he's hungry. It could happen. It's right there. Why not? What did Jesus say? It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And he wouldn't command. He wouldn't do it. Friends, there are times... It's just, it's just not right. We're not supposed to be trying to command something or say something. Our, the, the Spirit of God's not leading us. Our confidence is not there. You have to say it in power and authority. Right? That's why people have said it just off the top of their head and shouldn't have been saying it. It was just flesh motivated and there was nothing there that they should have been doing and then nothing happened. And you do that over and over again, you get to where you don't expect anything to happen. Notice in, in Paul's life, the, turn there. Have you got another five minutes or so? Turn in, in the book of Acts to the 16th chapter. He spoke with power and authority. Those two words, you could say it like this. He had a right to say it, and he had might to say it. Hmm? If it's going to work, you have to to know you have the right, and you have to say it with might. The spirit of might. Jesus said, uh, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit. And their life, he said, the spirit of quickens, the flesh profits nothing. That's why you can yell and scream and wave your arms and do all kind of stuff in the flesh and nothing happen. But if you speak authority with authority in the name of Jesus and with the might of the Spirit on it, it happens. It happens. It happens. In Acts 16, there was this young girl who was a fortune teller, you might say. She, I don't know, she read palms. She told people's fortunes, horoscopes, whatever. Somebody said, what's wrong with that? Everything. Stay away from it. (laughs) Read your Bible. We're commanded to stay away from these things. Why? Because some of it's just junk, but some of it there's actually evil spirits involved. And what they'll do is lie to you. And deceive you and try to mislead you. Besides that, you got the real Holy Spirit inside you. You don't need to go checking with some goofy imp who trembles when you use the name of Jesus. What you want to ask them for advice for? (laughs) Absolutely not. 
Don't be calling any hotlines. <laughs> Don't be getting anything read. Read this. Amen. Right? Uh huh. She came around and she started yelling out and said, these men are servants of the most high God. They show us the way. These men are servants of the most high God. But it was the wrong spirit. Did you know the devil quotes scriptures? Yes. He did to Jesus, didn't he? Yes. Try to be religious. But you can tell if something's a wrong spirit, man, it don't sit well with you. You're going, oh, wow. E. We said hush. What is that? Even if they're quoting scriptures. It's irritating. Irritating. <clears throat> and uh, verse 18, this did she many days. What? Paul let her do that many days? Why didn't he command that to come out first day? Why didn't he shut it down? Eventually, he said, I, after many days, everybody say, after many days. He said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And that's when they really got in trouble. That's when they got thrown in jail and beat over this. Well, you know, maybe they needed to preach a few more days before they got thrown in jail. I, I don't know all the details, but I know he didn't have confidence to command and say this. Now, when it's, when it's got to do with you, and something's tempting you and bugging you. You don't have to wait for anything. Resist that immediately in the name of Jesus. Now when it's got to do with other people. You don't have authority over other people. And if they want to yield to that. A lot of, that, a lot of times they can. No matter what you think. And you'll have to wait on the spirit in some of these situations. Apparently it came to a place where he, the spirit of God prompted him. He had confidence. And he said it with the right and he said it with might. Amen. And it happened. Yes. Yes. Can you see this, saints? Yes. Yes. Jesus was tempted to command when he shouldn't have. And of course he didn't. He wouldn't yield to the temptation. Is there a time to speak and a time not to speak? Yes. Just because you yell and say stuff in the flesh doesn't mean things are going to happen. Right. No matter how loud you are or how hard you stomp. Or, <laughs> hmm? And yet this is real. Yeah. And yet there's a time to do it. Yeah. You know, you really can't separate... Uh, living for the Lord and walking in, in, in life and faith from being led by the Spirit, can you? The answer to a thousand and one questions is be led. Be led. Do I command or not? Be led. <laughs> huh? Do I go or stay in the house? Be led. What do I do? Be led by the Spirit. Every day, every night, all the time. Another situation in Acts 27, Acts 27 verse 9, and I'm thinking about closing. <coughs> you got so yeah thank you they said be led you got something more important going on I mean this is Sunday this is church day right I mean let's we don't even have an evening service right so I guess you could stay in the morning for the time of both services you may think you're already doing that uh Acts 27 and 9, when much time was spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now, it was late, late in the year, Paul admonished them. Verse 10, he said, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading of the ship, but of our lives. He has a, a perception, a witness, a knowing that if we launch now, we're going to get in trouble. We're going to lose we're in danger of losing the stuff that's on the ship and the ship and our lives. Verse 11, 11, nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and owner of the ship more than some preacher. Right? He thought, you're not a captain of a ship. You're not a meteorologist. What do you know? How many understand if you know the Holy Ghost, you don't have to be a meteorologist or a captain of a ship. To know what to do in a situation. Because he knows everything and he's right about everything. So they launched. And without reading the whole thing, it seemed like for the first few days, everything's fine. Yeah, that preacher don't know what he's talking about. Look here, smooth sailing, good weather, and then. 
They got in a storm. They got in a hurricane. And I mean, they were in this thing for 14 days straight. It was so rough, they couldn't eat. They threw out the cargo of the ship. They threw out the tackling of the ship to make it lighter, trying not to drown. And at the end of that time, Paul came up and said, Men, an angel of the God whose I am and whom I serve has appeared to me. He's let me know that uh, we're going to be safe. God has given me not only my life, but your life too. That was one time they should have been glad the preacher was on board. <laughs> All of us going to live. He said, but we must be cast on an island. We're going to lose the ship. And it would have been a perfect time for it. Well, he actually, he did say, you should have listened to me. <laughs> he did say it. You should have listened to me and not left like this. Now, I want to ask a question. Why didn't Paul stand on the deck of that ship the first day that storm hit and command the wind and waves to cease? Hmm? Why not the third day? Why not the second week? You know he was tired of it. Hmm? I mean, the winds are, wa are, are, are wailing and, and, and the, the waves are crashing and that old ship is creaking and Sound like it's going to break up any minute. Why didn't Paul get on the deck of that ship and command that storm to stop? Why? Why? <laughs> day after, why didn't he command that damsel to, to be delivered the first day she started yelling and hollering? When other people are involved, You can't just take authority over everybody. It wasn't his ship. It wasn't his situation. He wasn't in leadership there. He tried to tell them, didn't he? They could have avoided the whole thing. But when you don't listen to the direction of the Lord and you blare on anyway, it can cost you. And he didn't obviously didn't have the confidence and didn't sense the anointing on him to stand up there and say that and do that. And so he didn't. And yet, by the grace and mercy of God, they were spared. And even though the boat did break up, they got to the island. None of them drowned. He's helping build the fire and get snake bit. Now here's where a lot of people would lose it, wouldn't they? They'd go, oh God, if it's not one thing, it's something else. I mean, I didn't drown, and the snake's going to get me. And he'd have died, too. What did he do? He just shook it off. What do you do when, when things are bugging you? One thing after, shake it off. Don't, don't emphasize it. Don't magnify it. Say, none of these things move me. I'm an overcomer. I'm more than con a conqueror. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Right? I'm coming through, I'm going all the way, and instead of dying in the sea, instead of dying from the snake bite, they had revival on the island. Amen. People got saved, people got healed, people got delivered, and he still got to go on and preach in front of the king too. Amen. There's no substitute for being led. Spirits are real. Angels are real. The devil is real. Demons are though they're not the monsters Hollywood makes them out to be, they're real. And you and I have been given authority and power. Everybody say authority. authority. And, and power. power. See, over all evil spirits, over any unclean and wrong spirit, and over every disease as well. Can we do what the master did in speaking to these things. Did he tell us, did he not tell us, the works I do, shall you do also? Right? If you believe in me, in my name, you'll cast out spirits. In my name, you'll lay hands on the sick. Didn't he say it? And they shall recover. In my name, you'll tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the evil one and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Does that sound good, did you? Amen. 
Stand on your feet, everybody. We hope you enjoyed this message from Pastor Keith Moore from Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. We're working on getting this lesson formatted and ready for translation into many languages. One of our goals is to curate and duplicate the best teaching in the world. There are millions of sermons and lessons online and many that are great, but not effectively managed. Most of the time, they are disorganized and unfiltered. It is very confusing for a new believer to find in-depth quality teaching that will lay a strong faith foundation. Visit faithtrainers.com forward slash Eagle Team to learn more. Grow fast. Grow strong. Glorify God.